So, you want, so, you want to learn how to cook in a township tale? Well, here's a quick no-nonsense guide on how to cook, harvest, and stew. Let's get into it. This is an apple tree. They're not very good for anything, really. This is a blueberry bush. They're good because you can eat as many of them as you want, and they won't take up fullness. They're also used in making one of the healing stews. This is a carrot plant. To harvest it, you pull it out of the ground, you cut the stem off, and then you cut the top off. This is an eggplant tree. These ones are all unripe, but the riper ones will be thicker than this. When they're ripe, they're good for resistance and healing stews. This here is garlic. It's used to increase the nutrition of your stews. To harvest it, you pull it out of the ground, you cut off the root, and then you also cut off the stem, and you're good to go. This is a glowing mushroom. Commonly carried by players as a source of light, it is also used to make the very nutritional stew. This is an orange mushroom. They are one of the more common mushrooms you'll find out in the wilderness. They are used in making speed, strength, and nutritional stews. This is a poison mushroom. It's not very nutritious or useful, but it is used in making the most nutritious stew in the game. This is a red mushroom. It is used in making the strongest healing stew in the game, although that stew is bad for nutrition. It is also used, however, to make the very nutritional stew. This is an onion. It is used in making speed, resistance, and strength stews. You can get it by pulling it out of the ground and pulling off the stem and the root. You're good to go. This is a potato plant, and I'll let Sam explain this one. Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. To harvest a potato plant, you pull it out of the ground and you pull the potatoes off of them. This is unripe, so I'm not going to pick it yet. But they're used in making speed, strength, and resistance stews. This is a ripe potato. This greener looking one is not. This is a tomato plant. It is used to make strength, speed, and resistance stews. They also splat when they're thrown. This is a babu. They spawn in the forest, and they're a bit tanky, so be careful when you try to kill them, especially if you're a new player. When they die, they drop you five giant pieces of meat that can be chopped into five smaller steaks. When you eat the meat, it gives you a strength buff. Right, so I nearly died fighting the babu, but this is what you get when you kill one. Right over there is a dice, commonly referred to as a deer. When you kill them, depending on what size they are, they will drop dice legs or deer legs. When you eat these, they provide you with a speed buff. This is what the meat looks like when you kill a dice. And you can cut it up to get five of these small bits. This is a spriggle, commonly referred to as chickens. When you kill them, they drop two drumsticks and some feathers. Those drumsticks can be chopped up into two pieces each, and they are also a very common food source among pumpkin. Now, before you eat or stew with any of your ingredients, it is always wise to cook them first. This way, you bring out the most nutrition and effectiveness in your ingredients. Doing small portions is fine if you're only cooking a few ingredients, but if you're trying to mass produce a lot of ingredients, then it is wise to set up a chest cooker. To make a chest cooker, or how to chest cook, is that you will place a piece of dried grass in the middle of the chest, and you will place your fuel on the outside or inside of it. Now all the other slots of the chest, there are 12, you're going to fill 11 of them up with a useless item or as long as it's an item that is other than what you are trying to cook or what will be cooked. In the slot that is empty, you're going to put a piece of the cooked item that you're going to be cooking. And afterwards, you toss all of your ingredients inside of the chest. When you see white smoke coming off of them, you'll know you're doing this properly. If you see brown smoke coming off of your ingredients, that means you're burning them. When the ingredients are finished cooking, it will be automatically collected by using the slot that you put the cooked food inside of. This process takes a little bit of time. As you can see, when the ingredients finish cooking, they automatically get put into the box. Let's get on to stewing. To stew, the first thing you need to do is find a water source. Normally, you can fill up your cauldron at the well, at the tap of the tavern if there's water in there, or you can fill it up at the smithy, which is a very common choice for people. To fill up your cauldron with water, you just dip it into the water source. The Hebeos ponds work as well.
When you finally have your cauldron filled up with water, place it over a fire. The water should start boiling soon afterwards. And once it does start to boil, it's time to add in your ingredients. For this stew, I'm going to be making an all-meat stew with a couple of other garnishes. Garnishes are essentially ingredients that do not take up space inside of the pot. Whenever you are stewing, you can only put in four ingredients at a time. For my garnishes, I'm going to be using garlic, which increases the nutrition of stews, and I will also be using salt, which increases the potency of buffs. This stew doesn't provide any, provide any buffs, but I will be adding salt anyway. You will see this initial flash when you add all four ingredients in, and the soup should also change color. And now we wait for it to cook, which should only take around 30 seconds. Each stew creates three portions that can be drank when you are only at two fullness bars. Every stew has a different effect, depending on what recipe you use. When the stew is finished, you will see another flash, and the stew should take on a different color, as well as become a bit more opaque. And as you can see, the stew has changed color. Using a glow shroom helps to determine whether or not a stew is complete. As you can see, it is a lovely brown color, and it is opaque. Well, that's pretty much it for the basics of cooking in Township Tale. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. If you want to see more of this content, or if you want to see a specific guide on a specific topic, please leave a like and comment below on what topic you would like me to cover. That's it for me. You all have a good day or night, wherever it is you are in the world.